Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Open Source Cafe. Today we have uh, Mies here with us from Fiberplane, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, all things around DevOps and microservices and some of the challenges and you know how to get started and learn more from Mies' experience. But before we get started, Mies, would you like to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure thing. Um, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, my name is Mies. I am the uh, founder and CEO of a company called Fiberplane. Um, this is my second startup. Um, so I can tell you a little bit about my background and sort of what brought me to all of this. So um, I, my background is in computer science. Um, I actually get my thesis on the topic around um, autonomous resource provisioning using software containers. This was all before Docker was a thing. Um, and I got cited by the, by, the, by the topic and started my first company called Worker which was a container native CI CD platform. Um, so we helped developers build, test and deploy their applications to that cloud. Um, so we kind of hit our stride when Docker and Kubernetes uh, came on the scene. Uh, so we kind of went through various, uh, I would say iterations of the platform but eventually settled on Kubernetes and, and, and Docker. Um, and then that company got acquired by Oracle in 2017. Uh, to bolster their cloud native strategy. Um, so spent a couple of years uh, inside of Oracle as a, as a VP of software development. And then 2019, um, uh, I kind of left, uh, 2020 actually. Um, and then um, started Fiberplane, sort of my second company and you know centered a lot around some of the challenges that we faced uh, at Worker uh, running and actually sort of large distributed system uh, on top of Kubernetes, uh, consisting of multiple moving parts, various microservices. Um, but I guess we can kind of uh, dive in into that. So yeah, current uh, venture is Fiberplane, a collaborative notebooks for DevOps and SRE. So imagine if Notion and Grafana would have a baby. I think that's a sort of good way of, of thinking about the product. Got you into startups? Like, uh, did you have a full time role before your previous startup, or have you always been into this ecosystem? Yeah, I think always been in, into this. Um, was a bit of a developer sort of during or after university, but um, uh, yeah, start, startups is all I've known, and then specifically developer tool and infrastructure uh, startups. Um, I also run an a investment fund called NP Hard Ventures which is also focused on uh, developer tools, uh, infrastructure. Uh, the overarching theme is sort of building blocks for tomorrow. So I do that with two other people um, uh, and we focus on pre-seed and seed uh, on these types of um, yeah, startups. So yeah, sort of very much geared towards uh, my own wheelhouse, which is developer tools and, and infrastructure. And what, like, how did you get into um... If, if you're talking about, about Fiberplane, right? What was the idea behind the, the company and how, how did you get started? And how did you realize like, okay, it's now time to move to like newer challenges uh, from your previous startup? Yeah, most, so. Uh, can you maybe tell, like I was just saying, can you tell us a little bit more about like the previous one? Yeah. Like, did that grow to like, like, you know, like thousands of employees or whatever? And because that's uh, what yeah, I, yeah. people do, yeah. like they, start company and they're like yeah. small, like startups and then it grows. So they're like, okay, now we need some new challenge. So they start another small, like right yeah. from scratch. Yeah. You are. Yeah. So I think, I think worker was around, I'd say like 20 to 23 employees when it, when it got acquired. Um, so that was sort of the, the, the size of the company. Um, and then, you know, so then moved obviously into, into Oracle, which has thousands of, of employees. Um, and I would say, I think sort of our group consists of maybe like a couple of hundreds of uh, hundred people uh, working on OCI, which was Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, uh, sort of the developer tooling around that. Um, but I think like startups is sort of in my DNA, right? And just wanted to, to build another company uh, and sort of do that creative process, which I like enjoy. I like building things and like, you know, with interesting people uh, and creating uh, products and creating a company. Uh, and sort of, I really like and enjoy those, those early, early days uh, inside of a company. Um, and then sort of in terms of 
the inception around it was very much around, you know, some of the challenges that we faced, right? So Worker was this, you know, large distributed system uh, where we, you know, run users arbitrary code because it was CI, CD. So, you know, you, we would provision a container for you that would, you know, run uh, your code where we have, we have no idea what was inside of it. So we kind of like had our fair share of downtime and like issues. So the inspiration for Fiberplane was very much that we were always going back and forth between metrics, logs, traces, and like trying to figure out what is going on, like different dashboards. Um, I always call this sort of the treasure hunt. Um, so try, trying to figure out like where, you know, where do you, the root cause of the problem uh, resides at. Um, and just notice that we use like context switching a lot. Again, like going back and forth between these different, different dashboards and like different views. And then on top of that, notice that it was kind of like people yelling inside of Slack, right? Sort of, you know, when something, when an issue occurred, like people pasting screenshots, um, you know, calling out what they think is, is the issue um, and not really collaborating. Um, so kind of like, and also I thought it was very weird how sort of we as developers have built a lot of collaborative tooling, right? You know, Figma, obviously in the design space, um, you've got, you know, Notion and productivity, um, you know, Framer for sort of building websites in a collaborative uh, manner. Um, and I just thought it was kind of odd how, you know, we've built all this software for other people, but we haven't really benefited from this move towards uh, collaborative software ourselves. Like think about it, you know, the, the tools that we kind of use in our collaborative in nature, maybe GitHub, right? Sort of, but not like super collaborative, right? Um, and the pull request itself is, you know, already quite quite some years old. Um, and then maybe sort of Visual Studio, you know, collaborative like live share, collaborative coding. But other than that, it's not really, it's not really, you know, we don't really use software that's collaborative in nature as developers. So I thought that was weird, and specifically DevOps, right? Um, so I thought that was kind of weird, um, and why that was. Um, so then decided on Fireplane, let's you know, build this more explorative form factor, like a notebook, but obviously sort of very much um, inspired by data science, um, where you can pull in all this different data from your infrastructure and your observability uh, stack, and then start like reasoning and correlating and obviously collaborating uh, around that. If you work when you're working with multiple teams, and always the developers might not be aware of like you know like they're like okay I just want to focus on writing code I don't want to work with this YAML file or whatever you know yeah. um, so you mentioned about DevOps and we'll talk more about you know some of the challenges and stuff but everyone has like you know there's so many definitions out there I I personally don't really care uh, like you can call it whatever you want um, but according to you what is when we talk about like DevOps, can you give us a, like an overview? And uh, if you're talking about five, uh, some challenges, you know, that let's say are trying to solve and how fiber plane is having with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the, the term DevOps has evolved quite a bit, right? I think originally, you know, when it came out and sort of was invented or the term, right? It's sort of it's it's sort of developers meets operations. So you know, traditionally, you would ask your system administrator to spin up a computer for you that you would deploy your application to or something, right? I think it's always sort of been this, this um, you know, separation of concerns. And I think sort of the term DevOps kind of like emphasize that, you know, either these different types of people or these activities need to be a bit more united. Um, I think now what you're seeing more and more is sort of, it's actually, I would say sort of, it's gravitating more towards the developer side. I think sort of developers will own operations um, because if you think about, you know, a developer is building these services, like is writing the code, they know how this system operates. Like they probably know best, like how to debug that system. Um, so I think sort of, yeah, it's, it, it's more dev than it is ops in, in my opinion. And now, of course, you got the term site reliability, and there's sort of now platform engineering, I think. Uh, but it all speaks to, I think, sort of the developers being more in power uh, and owning more of that, that system and sort of decision making around it. Um, so then in terms of the, the, the problems that Fireplane solves, 
again, like very much inspired, like from our own challenges that we had inside of inside of worker, like trying to debug these systems. So, you know, I think the first and foremost use case is very much centered around uh, sort of infrastructure debugging, uh, pulling in this sort of different data metrics, logs, traces inside this notebook, and then sort of figuring out what is going on inside of that system. Um, but you can also use this product, of course, for, um, you know, writing a postmortem, so, you know, say an incident occurred, um, you need to sort of write up the timeline of what happened when, um, maybe what was the impact. Um, Fiberplane is a great tool for that as well. Um, and so we have this system called Providers, which is sort of our plugin system. So this is the system that uh, we also recently open sourced. Um, and it, you know, we've got providers for um, CloudWatch, for uh, Elasticsearch, for Loki, for Prometheus, um, sort of all these different observability tools. And that you know, speaks to, you can suck in this data from these systems and then start reasoning and collaborating around that. Um, and that collaboration can be centered around, hey, I'm just investigating something. It could be an incident. It could be sort of after the fact where you're writing a, a post-incident review or, or um, a post-mortem. Um, but if you think about it, like this plugin system, you could also create a plugin, for instance, for um, your CICD system, right? And now you can start using this notebook for maybe codifying a runbook um, where, you know, you maybe you do a deploy and you see that deploy evolve inside of the notebook and you can tag other people uh, uh, inside of it and, and maybe debug, you know, if that deploy went, uh, uh, went wrong. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for sharing. And by the way, I'll leave all the links that, you know, he is mentioning in the description uh, below. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, this open source, you know, project of yours? And it's so nice to see companies, yeah. you know, contributing to open source and giving back. And why, why do you think that is? And I mean, to, in quite fairness, um, obviously it's helping people and helping the communities. But from a company standpoint, what do you think, like, are the benefits for a company when they give back to, let's say, the open source communities or... Some, some companies have their revenue based on open source as well. So um, that's totally fine. But yeah. what, uh, according to you, what, what motivated you to give back to open source from fiber plane point of view? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. And we've, we've open sourced quite a bit, right? So we've open sourced sort of the provider model it's, itself. Um, we've open sourced um, uh, what we call the fiber plane daemon. It's something it's effectively like a proxy that you install uh, inside of your um, internet, your Kubernetes infrastructure, and it sets up the connections. Um, and it's, I think there's sort of various reasons for open sourcing different different bits. Um, but overall, uh, I think for us, the reasons for open sourcing sort of the the, the provider uh, uh, model, right? Sort of it's. I mean, the fact of the matter is that sort of you, you're using all these different observability tools, um, and they all produce different. Uh, types of data, right, in different uh, sizes and different shapes, um, you know, be it metrics, logs, uh, traces, and they have very sort of specific behavior around how to retrieve uh, uh, that type of data from these, from these system. Um, got different vendors, of course. Um, you know, there's issues around how you're accessing this data, sort of the, the, the network topology, um, uh, you know, is your observability stack reachable at all, maybe, you know, from the public internet, probably not, right? So it has some security and network implications. Um, and then it's probably even more so true for um, uh, CICD systems as well, right? So for us, it was sort of, hey, can we standardize on a um, sort of protocol and a specification uh, that uh, will give you access to these different, different uh, systems, all right? Uh, and sort of, you know, uh, make them available in a in a common format. Now, in this case, Fiberplane is one of the uh, consumers of that format, right? Um, but it could very well be that maybe somebody else is interested in uh, consuming, you know, a bunch of this observability and telemetry data uh, using the standardized uh, protocol and specification. So I think that's the the first and foremost reason, right? Like, yeah, other people might find this useful. It doesn't really exist right now, and you know, it also creates trust and transparency, I would say. Especially when you're talking about DevOps. And uh, before I forget, you know, this question is on my mind. Like, um, 
you have so many open source, you know, you have open source, you have uh, a bit, you know, bit of your projects and uh, um, with open source comes contributions. So obviously there's the transparency, there's the, you know, trust and everything and the support uh, you know, for standardization. But uh, it also helps company in getting like quality contributions from the community. So if someone who is watching this podcast and you'd like to be like, let's say, okay, this is cool. I want to get involved. I want to you know, contribute, see what it's all about. What sort of ways and areas are in which uh, folks can contribute to the project? Yeah, yeah, super good question. Um, so I think on the provider side, right? So uh, right now, all of these providers are written in Rust. Uh, so we, we're heavy users of the Rust programming language. And then specifically, the providers are actually compiled to WebAssembly, uh, WASM, um, for, mostly for portability reasons. And they've got their own sort of security model. Um, so they run both in the browser and on the server side. I think that's a great way to start. Uh, you know, if you if you've got some Rust experience, um, yeah, exactly. Sort of this is the the website. If you've got some Rust experience, um, you know, maybe um, kick the tires on building a provider. Uh, we've actually uh, created a provider development kit uh, for people uh, to sort of kickstart uh, that, and then. Uh, we have a sample provider in there as well, so you can sort of have a have a look um, at how to build one. We have a tutorial uh, on it, and then of course we've got our actual providers that we open sourced, um, you know, consisting of Prometheus, um, CloudWatch, all of these tools. So you can sort of look at how these operate underneath the covers, um, and then start building your own. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing these. Um, and I'll leave the links in the description below. Um, one thing I want to also talk about is you know this whole whole area when I I travel a lot so you can tell by my face I look very tired because I just came back to London uh, yesterday <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah I've been traveling too much so more than required for conferences I slow down now but uh, the thing is I talk to all these people and they're like um, you know so for example I, there's so many buzz so much buzz around you know like microservices and DevOps and then the Kubernetes for example and you know, everyone is talking about it but then I talk to some companies and I'm like, are you using it? Are you using Kubernetes, for example, or a microservice based architecture? And they're like, no. And uh, I'm like, why? And they're like, it's very complex and we don't have like resources or whatever. And we're good, good right now. And not really sure if the benefits are, you know, for us or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the question to you is like your thoughts around that, you know, how it's not, and for developers as well, you know, like, Ask developers like, do you use this platform or that platform? They're like, no, you know, I'm a developer. I don't want to work with YAML files, and all of these things are pretty complex. We are just have a separate team that helps us out with that, and then there's a communication gap. Because I've heard people talk about this, I've discussed with them. So, tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on this, and like, uh, yeah. you know, how to apply these. Like, let's talk about some of the best practices for just the minute stuff, like getting started with a microservice architecture. Yeah. Yeah, 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 super good point. And I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think it kind of obviously depends on, you know, which developer you, you, you talk to, right? Like, uh, and what the needs of the application are. Um, but I do think that, yeah, occasionally, like Kubernetes is a pretty heavy tool um, if you just want to get your app up and running, right? Um, and I think that's kind of where like you also sort of the resurgence of platform as a service again. So you've got these platforms like Fly.io and Railway. Um, and I think they exist, you know, also because people don't necessarily want to deal with all these YAML files and, um, uh, you know, deal with the distributed systems and pods and containers and, and whatnot. Now, having said that, you know, if your app is very successful, um, you know, there is a chance that you might need to move on top of Kubernetes at some point, right? Um, you might need to sort of, you know, build a more scalable version of your of your application. And I think that's sort of the overall question that the industry maybe has, like, okay, what does the what does sort of the 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 on ramp look like for your to get started with all of this stuff, right? And can you can your platform or your cloud move along with you as your app grows and and uh, becomes maybe successful, right? Um, and I think it's the same for, uh, I would say sort of observability. I think there, and we've been thinking about this a lot and, um, I think there's really no on-ramp for observability as well, right? Like, um, 
I think sort of to to get started with, you know, telemetry and metrics and logs and traces, that's a pretty heavy investment that you need to make uh, yourself. Um, you kind of like need to get an entire SRE team up and running, like to build out the dashboard, build up the, you know, the observability infrastructure for you. Um, so that's been sort of on our mind as well. So we actually recently um, also open sourced uh, a project called Autometrics. Um, and right now it's sort of a library written in Rust and it's a library written in TypeScript, but effectively what it does is sort of it auto instruments your code. So, you know, consider of instrumentation, like doing metrics, like you need to actually write code for it in order to observe your, uh, your system. It's a bit like writing unit tests, right? Sort of work to do the work, um, which nobody likes to do. Um, and this library actually will, auto instrument your code for you and you get things like error rate and uh, latency use so response time uh, for free, right? It's in all in a, in a, a Prometheus compatible format. Um, so that's sort of one way how we're thinking about sort of this on ramp for observability, like, uh, cause nobody, if you're starting out, nobody's really instrument in, interested in doing all that stuff. Like, can we get you started? Like give you zero to one observability uh, quickly. So this is another open source library uh, that you can kind of find. Uh, out there. I think in terms of like, if you do need to do microservices, like, and if you do need to sort of start building your distributed system, I think um, the way we did it at Worker was usually you start out with maybe uh, identity. So off, uh, off N and off Z, um, like pull that out of your system and make that its own service. That's like usually a, a great place to start. And then you like slowly start pulling out different pieces of your, of your stack and um, yeah, turning those into microservices. That's more of a like tactical tip on that. Yeah, I think um, I, I think these things are complex, but also comes with like benefits. So you mentioned Kubernetes. Kubernetes is very complex, so that your applications can be simple. But if you talk about the these other things, like you know, like monitoring or let's like, say you know your cloud bills, for example, these things don't have to be complex. Unfortunately, the you know right now because of the ecosystem we are in, um, but yeah. it's nice, you know, we're coming up with uh, you know projects, uh, you know, such as like Fiberplane, for example, that is sort of like making it easy for folks. But there's a quote I really like by Albert Einstein, which is, uh, "Genius is making complex ideas simple, not making simple ideas complex." I think it applies yeah. to our whole uh, <laughs> microservice discussion. But uh, yeah, I mean. Um, uh, so one last question I have around, like, oh, before before we move forward, is uh, I want to share one more thing, because we were talking about uh, contributions. So I just saw this on your website while we were sharing about it, which is um, never contribute to competition. I think this is pretty cool. For example, uh, you can win a nice cool T-shirt if you get first accepted yeah. PR, the documents or something, and all the links and everything is given over here. So. Uh, I I think that's pretty cool. Oh, giving away a Raspberry Pi kit if you build the first community provider. Provider, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah so, work. so, uh, I mean, yeah. So it doesn't, you know, yeah. In order to get the Raspberry Pi, you need to start uh, cracking open the 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 Rust code. But um, you know, if you do a pull request on our docs or like make an improvement there, like that's you know, um, you can win some swag as well. So. Pretty cool, yeah. It's nice. So, if you know, in some swag uh, or a Raspberry Pi, you can check out the link in the description. But uh, my last questions are around like uh, Fiberplane in, in itself. What did you learn while building the product? And um, yeah. can you tell us a little more about the future roadmap? What that looks like uh, for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know, for us, I mean, we set on on this mission right to build this 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 collaborative notebook platform. I will say. Is a bit of a complicated product. I always like to say that we're kind of like building two startups at the same time. Like one is sort of the Notion collaborative real-time text editing piece, which turns out is actually quite complicated to build on its own. You know, it warrants its own company. Um, and then the other piece is the entire observability and the infrastructure uh, component, right? Um, so I guess sort of lesson learned is that, yeah, that's kind of tough to do. Um, but you know we have we have a great team, um, and and we pulled it off thus far. So I think that's just sort of one lesson learned. Like uh, that's you know you kind of like doing two things at the same time. 
um, which are not which is not easy. Um, yeah, and then in terms of roadmap, um, you know, we'll be adding you know more providers, of course, ourselves as well. So open telemetry is is uh, is one uh, that's coming out soon. Uh, we'll be adding you know more uh, cell types. So if you think of Fiberplane, the notebook. You know, we've got cell types for logs. We've got cell types for charts. Um, we've got like lists and all that. Um, so we're, we'll be adding uh, more of those in the future as well. Uh, so you can sort of start adding more components uh, to your um, um, uh, to your notebook. Um, yeah, and then uh, investing more on the automatic side of things as well. Uh, so doing more uh, language implementation. So uh, right now, again, we got Rust and TypeScript. You can expect sort of a Python version uh, out uh, out soon. Awesome! And if you want to get you know get involved, uh, we already discussed that. So you can check out the links in the description. Means it was amazing talking to you, and uh, we'll definitely do more collabs together. I wanna, really want you to interact with the community as well. So we do some you know some live sessions. But uh, uh, thanks a lot for joining. Really appreciate you giving your time and. Um, you know, good luck with the you know the, the project. We'll obviously you know uh, uh, I'll obviously you know uh, try it out and uh, like um, share my views around it and share with how you know folks can get started. But uh, if you want to get started right now, you can check out the links in the description uh, below. And if you have any questions, you can just uh, you know either, either leave them in the comments or you can join the Fire Brain community. Um, you can check them out on Twitter, social media. I think you're active almost most most of the places. Um, yeah, it was really great talking to you. And uh, any closing Likewise. remarks? Yeah. No, um, you know, check out fiberplane.com. Uh, start doing your first pull request. Uh, we also have a Discord. Feel free to join out as well. And uh, oh, yeah, join that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for having me. Cool. Thanks, Mies. And uh, yeah, this Mies mentioned a Discord link. I'll leave it in the description below so you can join that. And see you in the next one. Have a good day.